Good afternoon and welcome to um, the Government of Canada's M365 Council uh, hosted by Orangatech. We are fortunate uh, today to be hearing from um, SSC building the plane while flying it. I know that we can relate um, to that during the pandemic. SSC M365 user adoption during COVID-19. What a great topic. Uh, the M365 Council was founded in 2018. We are on our fourth season. We've seen this grow from a small boardroom with 10 people to now a mailing list of over 400, 400 people and regularly getting around 100 attendees, of course, planned and presented by your very own Orangatech. Who is Orangatech? Why are we doing this? Why, why are we even bothering hosting this? Um, Orangatech is a Microsoft Gold partner. We are Gold certified in three competencies, application development, collaboration and content to SharePoint Online and cloud productivity. We've been nominated six out of the past seven years as one of Canada's top growing companies. And we do the majority of our business, of course, with you, with the federal government of Canada. And part of being experts in, uh, in federal government in Canada and procurement is we've, we've put this together for an opportunity to learn. You can sit through Lots of decks, next slide please. You can sit through lots of decks and watch videos and learn about M365, read about it on LinkedIn, but really legitimate learning comes through shared experience, comes through learning from each other. And that's what we will wanna facilitate here at the M365 Council. We believe that learning comes through implementation, plans, challenges, lessons learned and successes. And that's what we have an opportunity to hear about today. Next slide, please. So there's going to be questions. We're going to go over some some great uh, a great topic today. There's going to be some questions. Please submit your questions through Teams Live. Identify yourself when when asking the questions just to give us a little bit of context, help personalize it a little bit. You can vote for questions that you want to see answered. Give it a thumbs up. You like the question? You think it's a great question? Give it a thumbs up. And we will review Q and A at the at the at the end of the presentation. We're going to let this train chug along. We're going to review the Q&A at the end of the presentation and our next GOC M365 Council meeting will be next month, last Thursday of the month, April 28th, 2022. Right uh, clear, uh, af clear after we finished the uh, federal government year end. So uh, looking forward to having you all then. And so without further ado, I would like to throw it over to um, to Mark. That's great. Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Mark Abdelnar. I'm here today with Kelly Miller. Uh, we're both communication and change specialists working in the collaboration solutions team under Jeffrey Braybrook at Shared Services Canada. And we are really excited about sharing with you all the experiences we had rolling out M365 during this, this pretty tough time through COVID. So with that said, I just want to go through the agenda so you get a little bit of a feel of what we're going to be going through here today. So first off, we're going to have some an introduction done by Shannon Kenny, and then we're going to look at what we call the core foundational pieces. Think of this as COVID hits, and then what do we need to put in place quickly in order to best support the employees at SSC? And that's what we're going to focus on there. And then we head into the now what? So we have the foundation in place, but then the next question is, how do we spread the word? How do we get people interested in what it is we're actually putting out there? And then the path forward. So this is going to be key, right? It's where we are now and what we plan to do moving forward, 2022 and beyond. And then time permitting, or I'm sure we'll have time, but hopefully we'll have enough time to answer your questions at the end of the session. So with that said, what I'd like to do now is for a quick introduction from Shannon Kenny. She's our Senior Director, Digital Workplace Experience Division within the CIO branch at Shared Services Canada. So Shannon, whenever you're ready, please go ahead. Okay, well, thanks so much for having me here today. And uh, 
we were chatting before we started the event, and uh, this is not my first rodeo. In fact, this is my third rodeo here here at uh, the Orang Tech events, and uh, I've had a great time every time. But I'm glad to be um, I'm glad to be introducing you great people who can who really are doing the work behind the scenes, and rather than just me bragging about it. So. So when we talk about collaboration tools, what I'm sure many, many of you know is that, you know, when you push out a platform such as the one, you know, such as M365, it is not just about tools and technology, it's about organizational change. So in a perfect world, you prepare an organization for that change and you probably have a good year to do that, to talk about what's coming, why it's coming, how it's gonna change the way we work and so on. But in the case of Shared Services Canada, unfortunately, COVID arrived and this puppy had to be thrown out the door very, very quickly in response to the pandemic and in response to having to work from home. So what this team had to do was act fast and provide users with some of those foundational pieces Mark was talking about to help to just help them land with this new technology, figure things out, as SSC was slowly enabling tools and features kind of over a three month period and people were getting used to them. So we expected to have nine months to push it out and really we had about four weeks. So that created a lot of chaos and a big scramble. But in the end, um, what we what we did with our users was, I think that anyway, what we're, we're very proud of is we provided them with those core foundational pieces and now we're actually, I'm really excited to start talking about what we're going to be doing next to drive adoption even further. So I'll stop there and I'm going to pass it over to Kelly, who will take you through the presentation and share lots of great insights with you today. Awesome, thank you. So uh, Shannon really kind of set the scene for us and that's where the story starts. So all of a sudden we're dealing with a pandemic, everyone's working from home and we accelerated our project months ahead of schedule. So we really needed to get those core foundational pieces in place in order just to make it all work. So uh, we'll start with the initial rollout. So the initial response to COVID was of course gonna focus on the user's immediate needs because we're all navigating remote work. So we ended up taking a super reactive approach to our rollout during this whole period. And we were just kind of rolling with the punches, kind of like everyone else in the world was at this point. So uh, first and foremost, we had to make the tools available. So we made the core applications from the suite available through the web browser for the whole organization. And obviously people's main concern at this point working from home was to be able to communicate with their colleagues in order to actually get work done. So naturally our primary focus was gonna be on Teams. Um, of course, we already had things like Jabber and WebEx and email for people to communicate, but the goal really was to get users on one main platform to kind of streamline communication and just so that they only kind of had one tool that they had to worry about. So that's all great, but the next thing that we had to consider was how to tell people about it. So communications obviously was central to the entire rollout. And as the weeks and the months kind of carried on as we were working from home, we started gradually rolling out new features, new functionalities and apps. Um, so for example, as I said, we released the core apps on the web first, and then a little bit later we enabled video and then it was screen sharing. And then we rolled out the desktop applications and then we added audio conferencing lines and then we added more apps. Like, so it was really kind of a gradual rollout, um, but we kind of, kept building on what we had and we needed to let people know whenever we had something new. So the real challenge was people were receiving so many communications during this time about all things COVID and working from home and from all the other teams across the organization. So we really had to kind of squeeze in there and just hope that people were paying attention. And then another thing that we had to consider was support. So we released all these great things. We told everyone about it, but what if they need help? So releasing the tools nine months ahead of schedule didn't really give the service desk much of a chance to be prepared to support M365. And to be honest, we weren't really ready to support it either. Um, like we didn't have scripts or user guides or protocols that we could follow um, that were kind of in place. Uh, so what we did was we took it on. Um, we took on that initial responsibility at least to support our users. Um, and this was kind of like the first the uh, key points to this core foundation. So with all these releases, 
the comms and the support. We were a little bit all over the place right off the bat, and we kind of needed to rein it in and build something a little more concrete to give all of this a home. So with that, I'll pass it over to Mark. Thank you, Kelly. So exactly that, Kelly. We needed a place for all things M365 to live. So one centralized place. So a big part of that was actually practicing what we preach, right? And if you look at leading by example, we used SharePoint Online to build what's now called 365 Central. So this was a SharePoint communication site and everything, anything related to M365 was hosted here on this site. So Kelly mentioned the surge of corporate communications that were actually happening during COVID, everyone working from home. There was a lot of communications going out. So it was important for us to not burden communications internally with even more stuff that they needed to do. So we took it upon ourselves to take that content, everything that Kelly was referring to, plus a lot of the stuff that you see here in this bulleted list. So what was inside 365 Central? You'd, th you'd see things like the ability to request a team in Microsoft Teams. We had different app profiles, support forms, best practices, announcements. I think you're getting the message, like everything and anything, 365 in one place. Now, I think what's gonna help is a visual here. So Kelly, could you bring up the slide where I, exactly, this is the home screen today for 365 Central. So it didn't look exactly like this way back when, but it was certainly pretty close to this actually. There's a couple of things I wanna point out. Kelly mentioned that our initial focus was Teams, and she's absolutely right. I mean, everybody working from home, we needed to make sure that people knew how to use Teams. And one of the functionalities within Team, as all of you I'm sure are aware, is the ability to also request a team in Microsoft Teams. Now, most organizations, I shouldn't say most, there are two approaches to requesting a team and how an organization handles that whole process. The first option is it's literally open to everyone. So if I want a team in Microsoft Teams, I can just go in and create it myself versus a more of a, 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 a it's a better way of saying this, more gatekeeper, if you will, where people would complete a form. It would be a request form. It would go through to a dedicated team, and in this case, an SSC, who would then vet the form, ensure everything is okay, and then grant the team, create the team for that individual. So we went with the latter. So we had a form, people had to complete the form. There were all sorts of information we were capturing in that form, including the team owner, a team sponsor. Jeff Braybrook was really reinforcing the importance of avoiding what we call, and what we've heard a lot of places call, the team sprawl. And that's what happens when you have just way too many teams. There's lots of duplication, lots of confusion. So to avoid that, we put this structure in place. And that's what you're seeing here on the request a team uh, section here, just below the yellow box. Now, above that is something that's yellow, that yellow box, it says need help with M365 Support Center. Again, something Kelly said, our service desk was great. They were doing their best, but we were also taking a direct hit with support calls and we were helping as much as we could. That's what this box is all about. If someone within the organization needed help with M365, they would go here through this yellow box, click on the support center. There what they would see is an app profile. So let's use the example of Teams. There would be a whole listing of all the apps from which they could pick. And let's say they clicked on Teams. There would be an app profile for Teams. It would point to training materials that we created or Microsoft content and it would also speak to the availability of that app at SSC. So not just, yes, you have Teams, but you also have the desktop version, the web version. It also spoke to if we provide support on the app or not. But most importantly, if you exhausted all those options and you were unable to get the help you needed, there was a form there that they could use to submit a request for support with respect to that app. So again, all of that accessible right from 365 Central. I'm just going to point out a couple of other things on this page. You can see there towards the middle, the announcements section. So anything, everything related to M365 that was newsworthy, we would post here. And then down in the bottom right, you can see those six blue boxes. That's where you can see we had FAQs and best practices. So I can say right now for 365 Central, it's an absolute staple 
in terms of our vehicles that we use when communicating out about these projects related to M365. OK, so it's become an absolute staple. Now that's 365 Central, right? A place where we can store all this content. How do we now get this information out there to 10,000 people at SSC? That's where we introduce now the 365 Champions Network. Now, Microsoft speaks very highly of Champions Networks. I don't disagree. Uh, me personally, I've probably been a part of I'd say almost close to 10 different networks over the years I've worked as a consultant. It's a very powerful tool, very effective tool for getting the word out. You can see here we have we have currently 400 plus members. And for those of you who are new to the whole concept of a champions network, as it states here, it's a grassroots network of people, in this case throughout SSE, who encourage M365 adoption within their respective groups, within their respective teams. So through word of mouth, through promotion, uh, we had plenty of people through the organization helping us kind of drum up interest in participating in these Champions Network sessions. As I said earlier, we're at 400 plus now. Here's what it looks like, okay? We have monthly sessions with these members and within these sessions, these meetings, we would include M365 announcements, product walkthroughs, best practices, Ultimately, the goal was maximum exposure of our messaging. So all of this information that we had stored on 365 Central, the goal was we need to get that out there. We weren't looking, and you can be very upfront with you, we weren't looking for the champions to provide us with really anything, at least initially. This was about, let's just get the content out there, get more boots on the ground, get them spreading the word on our behalf. So that's what we ran with, and buy-in was absolutely essential with this group. There was big time focus on what's called the WIFM, which is what's in it for me. Big time focus on that. How do we make this very much benefits driven? We were also providing them with training, getting them up to speed. And this is a very key point I want to make here. These were tough times, right? I mean, they were talking about 2020, COVID starting out. This was not a time to be introducing more work for people. So we wanted to make sure that our ask was minimal of these members. We instead wanted it to be easy, fun, and light. So knowing all that now, the program evolved, right? So over time, month over month, we started seeing the value. They started seeing the value. And as I stated earlier, it was very much one-way communication. We're providing them with content, and we weren't sure if they were then taking that content and providing it to the people they represent, the groups they represent. So we introduced something called the 365 scoop. The 365 scoop, which you can see here, this is an example from way back in January 2021, actually. This is a summary of what was discussed in the champion session. So that one session that we had, let's say in January, this would follow up that session and we would send this out to the champions and we would ask the champions to then share this with the groups, with the people that they represented. So again, the goal was to make this as easy as possible on them. And the hope was that this would become more two-way sharing rather than one way. So this is one of the steps we took back starting in 2021. And we've consistently kept those going as we've gone. So to kind of close off this whole thing with respect to the champions, like 365 Central, it's become an essential vehicle for us. We use the champions for promotion of any of the M365 initiatives and projects, but it's also come down to even policies, right? The team is now quickly realizing that M365 is having a much bigger impact, like this is an org wide impact, which is kind of the perfect segue back over to you, Kelly. Amazing, so Mark said it, um, M365 is not an island and what we mean by that is it's such a huge platform with an extensive suite of tools and they all kind of work hand in hand. So we really had to look at the bigger picture just because it went so far beyond just our own M365 team. So what we had to do was we had to really master working with the adjacent groups across SSC to accomplish what we needed done. So just a few examples of these kinds of areas. Um, the first one is the M365 requirements. So 
it's actual the actual work that's required to kind of get things up and running uh, within the platform. Uh, so things like security or email services, mobile phones, information management, things like that. There's also government specific considerations. So that's things like accessibility and official languages, corporate communications and privacy concerns. And then thinking even further down the line, we ended up working with groups who were doing projects that were kind of intertwined with M365. So that's things like desktop modernization, the return to the workplace, process improvement initiatives, and the power platform tools. And then in addition to all of this, um, we wanted to offer our support and our tools for external projects that we thought could be enhanced by M365. So whether that's hosting a live event for an all staff or integrating you know, our charitable campaign button right into the Teams app for people to access. So it's things like that. Um, but really all this to say, we had a lot going on during this time of our lives. Uh, it's a little bit of a whirlwind, but we were able to get our footing and build what I would consider a pretty solid foundation to kind of build off of. So with that being said, I'll pass it back to Mark. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. So absolutely, think about that now. We've completed this whole section, if you will, or all the work related to laying down that foundation, right? So we have that solid ground on which to build. Now the focus is even more so on user adoption and getting everyone's attention. So where did we go next? We needed some sort of a umbrella structure. I mean, uh, Shannon Kenny loves to say North Star. I completely agree with her here. At SSC's North Star for user adoption and how we work, we coined as the new ways of working or NWOW. So you're going to hear us say NWOW from this point forward. It's really our new ways of working with M365. Okay, so what is it we're trying, we're striving for here? So we had, we introduced four pillars and you can see those down at the bottom. And these are overarching pillars to help guide the path forward towards the future of work. And really, if I can break that down, it provided us with some true structure on how we communicate, how we provide training, right? We didn't want just these random offerings left and right. How do we structure things in such a way that there is some sort of structure for lack of a better word? So each one of these pillars that you see here represents a change in behavior or what we called observable actions that demonstrate SSC's new ways of working using M365. Let, let's dive a little deeper into each one of these pillars. So first, connect and communicate. Seems obvious up front, but we are looking for some specific, specific things here. So for example, reducing the clutter in your Outlook inbox. How does that relate? Well, really, if you think about M365, it's really, there's a lot of tools out there that do kind of the same thing. But if you look at Teams as an example, if you're using Teams effectively, you're actually reducing the clutter in your email inbox. And that's kind of some of the things we look at for each one of these pillars. If you look at effective meetings, yes, we all know how to schedule meetings, but it goes further than that. What about ensuring full accessibility in the decks that you work from? And what about the built-in features for Teams? And believe me, there's a lot of them. And then working smarter with documents. Again, another seemingly obvious one, but I'll tell you something. Something that really struck me actually was there wasn't a lot, I wouldn't say the majority of people were familiar with the ability to simultaneously edit the same document with someone else, so, you know, two, three, four, five people. You know, that's called co-authoring in M365, and that's something we focus on here in this pillar. The other focus point for working smarter with documents is dealing with links rather than attachments. We're all used to sending emails with attached files. We now know that the better way is sending links to files. So all that would fall in that area. And then last but not least, work from anywhere. Now that's a very common phrase. You've heard it from Microsoft, but if you look at where we were, back in 2020 when COVID hit, you know, it wasn't everyone working from home. This is now truly work from anywhere. You're in the park, you know, during the summer, you're at home during the work days, you're on your phone in the car. So this became a huge focus as well. I just want to point out that along the bottom, you notice all those symbols. Those are all the various icons of the apps. Those apps were kind of the focus apps for each one of those pillars because those are the ones that would actually help you get there, help you realize that uh, future of work pillar. 
Okay, so from there, Kelly, we'll move to the next slide. Okay, so all that sounds great, but now we're thinking, how are we supposed to make all of this a reality? So we figured that we actually had to show people how to apply those pillars to their day-to-day -day work. So in comes training. Um, we already had a dedicated trainer and she had a team and they were providing live courses for employees and those were available on 365 Central. So at that point, um, we kind of only had a couple basic Teams courses because as I said before, Teams was pretty much our initial focus. Uh, so now we wanted to kind of expand our offerings and introduce users to all the other applications in the suite that we thought they should be taking advantage of. So we really wanted people to understand how the apps could actually help them achieve these NWOW pillars that Mark uh, described. So those pillars were fully integrated and kind of weaved through the courses and the demos that we were offering. So what we built is what we called the M365 Learning Journeys, and we actually made it in the form of a path for people to follow. So the point was that starting training in general can be kind of intimidating, and the M365 platform overall can be very intimidating. Uh, so a lot of people don't know where to start. Uh, so we tried laying it out for users so that they could complete what we thought would give them a well-rounded um, understanding of the tools. So in order for a user to successfully complete this journey, they needed to finish all five core courses, which are at the top there, and then choose two electives at the bottom based on the type of work that they do. And when they completed all those courses, they could consider themselves finished their journey. So just a quick little visual of the website to show kind of how it was laid out for users. Um, this is the training hub on 365 Central, and it's where users get a breakdown of the journeys where they can access registration for each of the courses. And then we also built a program right into this page that automatically tracks each user's um, personal course history so that they know where they are in their journey and what they've already completed. So we had all this planned out and it was all ready to go, but there was a little bit more work to do to actually get things rolling. So Mark can uh, expand on that a bit. I can, Kelly, thank you. So just like it says here, training is not going to work if no one goes, right? So we have these learning journeys. We have 365 Central. We have our champions. We have our new ways of working. We need to get some attention on these things. So we needed a big bang to kick things off. So again, take us back to 2020 during this period. It was tough and people were distracted. There was lots of communications, lots of frustration. And we were on the opposite end of that, trying to get everyone excited and we wanted to build awareness. We knew we needed something memorable, something different, dare I say, edgy. And that's where we introduced this whole new thing called Fast Apps. Okay, and this was to help promote the new ways of working through learning. So I want you to wrap your head around this. It might be a little challenging until I show you some of the real collateral, but really what we did is in and around Valentine's Day, we had this event. This event was called Fast Apps and it was speed dating with M365. And just like the tag phrase says above those little icons, it says just in time for Valentine's Day, excuse me, maybe you'll find one or more apps that you can't live without. And it says join in on the fun and help us launch SSC's new ways of working. On the right side, it says SSC meet 365, M365 meet SSC. The idea here was that we were setting up a speed dating scenario or theme where each one of the apps represent a person, let's say, a personality, and they were vying for all the audience's attention, and the hopes were that by picking that app, those people would sign up for training. This is an example of a team's background that we developed. We offered two sessions, one in English, one in French. It was on Friday, February 12th, 2021. And the idea again was to promote this event and get as many people as possible to attend. On the next slide, it'll help you have a better idea of what this looked like. This is actual collateral slides that we pulled from the event itself. We presented all the apps and each one of these apps was represented by a person within our team. So on Kelly, myself, Donna, there were others on our team. Each of us represented one of these apps. And what we were doing is promoting ourselves by doing a presentation related to that specific app. 
If we go to the next slide, let's use this example. Let's pretend that I was Teams. I think I was Forms actually, but just pretend that I was Teams. This is how that would have all rolled out. I'd say, hello everyone, I'm Teams. I'm well-rounded, I'm multi-talented, and I'm somewhat of a social butterfly. And that's when I go in deeper and really sell myself to the group. Again, pretending that I was looking for a date, so to speak, or someone to pick me, right? So then I push out my favorite hobbies and say, yeah, I'm storing team files, chatting with coworkers, hosting meetings. Then what do I have to offer? Well, those should look familiar to you because those are the end wows. That's the new way of working. And all we're seeing here is that Teams is a big player in the new ways of working. And we all know that to be true. And then where it says my ideal date, this was the fun part because what I'm describing to everyone is what it would be like to go out on a date with me, Teams. So what I would do is now take everyone through a presentation on Teams. It was a walkthrough of the actual app. So if you go to the next slide, I would close off my presentation to everyone with why should you choose me? And I'd have some sort of tag phrase. Each one of the apps had a different one. Mine says there's no I in team and let me open your eyes to real time collaboration. I love that. And I left everyone with a call to action. And this is the key point of this whole exercise is that's where we would say, if you want to get to know me better, Go to 365 Central and register for my class, my team's class, and jump in on the learning journeys. The next couple of slides just show you examples of other profiles. So there's planners, and then the next one I believe is OneNote. You can see it matches the same structure. So this was a big event for us, and obviously pins and needles, we weren't sure how successful or, su or not successful it was going to be. And what you're seeing here are the metrics from that event. You can see off to the left there where it says attendees. We had over a thousand people attend. Now we're told that this is one of the highest attended uh, sessions or events, if you will, at SSC. So that's a pretty big number. You can also see that we scored 4.77 out of five as an average event rating. And the pie chart, this is the most meaningful in my opinion, over 80, 87% said that they are likely to sign up for a course. And the truth is they actually did. If you look in the bottom right corner, shortly after the event, we're tallying up over a thousand course registrations. So huge success this event. So riding that high, Kelly, I'm, I'm turning it back to you. Amazing. So like Mark showed, the event really was such a success that it kind of became our go to approach for everything moving forward. So uh, we really wanted to start focusing on creative attention grabbing campaigns. And it just so happened that our team was gearing up to complete email migration for the entire organization. So for those of you who don't know, email migration is essentially the transition from the Bell email service to the M365 platform, and it involved migrating all 10,000 plus inboxes at SSE. So it was a huge project, and SSE was also a Pathfinder department, which means we were one of the first ones to actually go through this process and kind of pave the way. Um, so we knew going into it that it was going to be a little bit chaotic and it really was all hands on deck. Um, so what we did was we copied ourselves and we jumped up a whole new concept, which we called the mighty mail migration. So everything we did for email migration fell under this campaign theme. So we had backgrounds, target messaging, lock screens, banners, uh, site content. We also hosted info sessions and we did presentations. So we were kind of all over the place with this little superhero guy and we we're trying to get people to pay attention. Um, but it wasn't just about getting their attention this time. We needed it to be informative too. So the tough part here, and I apologize to anyone who's super passionate about mail migration, but from a user perspective, it's a little bit dry. Like it's not really a fun task for people. So the project was very complex and unavoidable, and it also affected the entire organization. And on top of that, there was actual user preparation involved. So they actually had to do a little bit of work in order to prepare. So the whole like what's in it for me concept, it was really front of mind um, to get them engaged in this process. So the whole campaign, I don't want to say we tricked users into thinking migration was fun because I don't think we fooled anybody, but I would like to think that we kind of made it a little less painful and really highlighted the benefits of the whole initiative and get people a little more engaged. So 
part of our campaign was what we called the preparation pathway and I'll show it here. So basically we built an interactive three step process for users to follow during this campaign. So everything we put out comms wise directed them right back to this hub on 365 Central. And we were constantly like every single day we were updating these pages with the latest information as the project went on as we were learning new things and kind of getting a grasp on things. So I'll kind of run through the steps here. So uh, step one, users go to the site, they click on step one and it's really kind of an overview. So it's the starting point for them to understand what is this project? What are we doing and how does it affect me? Um, so it's kind of just a compilation of user impacts and FAQs. And then they move on to step two, which is the actual ask. So we needed users to go through this list and manually back up any items to make sure that they didn't get lost forever in the migration process. So we had to lay out step by step what, what each item was and then also what they had to do to make sure it was backed up. And then step three, uh, once migration is done, this is kind of how you get set up again, how you troubleshoot any issues and, and how to get help. So this is kind of the structure that we followed. And although it was kind of, like I said, a little bit chaotic, um, I would say that email migration was considered another success uh, under our team's belt. So since migration was mandatory, um, and it was organization wide, we really used all possible vehicles um, that were available to us. So this kind of paved the way for our future selves because we were able to leverage this approach for all of our future projects and initiatives. Um, so at this point, we've done so much work, we've learned all these lessons, and we really kind of figured out what comms and change methods worked for us. So now we need to think about the future of all this and kind of where we're headed from this point. Well, what we were left with is what we called a rinse and repeat structure. So now we kind of break our projects into three sections. So the first phase is the planning phase, which I think is pretty self-explanatory. It really is just a traditional comps plan. So we lay out key messages, our audience, executive sponsorship, which is super important, um, our stakeholders and our timeline. But one thing that became very clear, especially working from home, and we've talked about this before, is how obvious the what's in it for me needed to be in order to get that buy-in and to get people to pay attention. Uh, the next step is the building phase. So this is the actual creation of these concepts and campaigns. And of course, what became extremely important in their success um, is the cohesiveness and the actual visuals that we could attach to them. So we were fortunate enough to kind of have this talented team already that can make this all a reality. Um, and then lastly is the actual delivery of all this. So now I would say we have a pretty comprehensive list of our go to channels and our audiences um, that we use to get our messages out no matter what project we're doing. So of course we're going to take advantage of corporate comms. Um, everything we do also goes on 365 Central and it gets relayed to our champions. Um, but the two methods that really stood out the most, I would say, is the direct communications from our executive sponsor to their fellow executives, just to get that initial buy-in from that level. And then also our customized communications that go directly to special interest groups or target audiences that we think would either be interested in getting involved or who would be able to help us get the message out to the right people. So this whole thing is a repeatable process and it's kind of our standard now for everything that we do. So uh, this is what we were left with and now I'll pass it back over to Mark to kind of move us forward. Thank you, Thank Kelly. You, Kelly. So let's look let's at this look. now. We have all these vehicles in place. We also have this rinse and repeat approach that we have. So now let's just pause for a second and look at where we are. Okay, so we're talking about the path forward. So where we are today and what we plan to do you know, through 2022 and beyond. If you look back to 2020 when COVID started, right? And I think Shannon kind of spoke to this as well. We had all sorts of plans. We had all sorts of strategies. And what I'm about to show you and speak of in this section is all the stuff that we wish we could have done way back then. So looking at this slide here, this is all about, again, that North Star, but this time as it relates to adoption at SSC. 
if you haven't seen this curve before, it's 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 really cool because it gives you a good idea of the maturity of adoption as it relates to M365. And then as an organization, you kind of discuss where do you see us landing? Where do you want to actually be? So as an example, the first level basic adoption, that's really just daily usage, right? So think about that for a sec. Today, 100 people are using OneNote. In a month, 200 people are using it, and you're using that to say, OK, our basic adoption is successful. We're moving in the right direction, and we're just looking at usage. Then you kind of graduate up the curve to intermediate adoption. Now you're seeing behavior change. And when you hear the word behavior, you're probably thinking back to our NWOWs and the new ways of working because they do go hand in hand. The new ways of working actually strive for exactly that behavior change, right? So that whole piece there is more intermediate adoption. And the perfect example as it's bolded there is instead of sending attachments, the organization, the majority of the organization is now sending links instead, right? That's a really nice thing to see for intermediate adoption as an example. And now we move into advanced adoption, then Uber adoption. Advanced adoption, that's where you're using more advanced platforms, but you're also using more solutioning. Think of it this way. Today we might use Teams for a meeting. But when you get to advanced adoption, you're not just using Teams on its own for the meeting. You might be rolling in Planner to assign tasks or maybe lists to track any type of items. And then you might throw in OneNote to capture meeting notes and all of that integrated together into some form of a solution. That whole thing is advanced adoption. And then when we move to Uber adoption, this is the crazy stuff, right? Now we're getting into automation using Power Platform. So that type of thing. So as an organization, you ask yourself, where do we want to be? Not everybody wants to be Uber adopting, right? You might just want to get to advanced, and that's where we fall in. So if you look here at the stars, the first star, I believe that's purple, but whatever that color is of the first star, it's where we are today. So we're in between basic and intermediate. Where we want to be for 2022 and beyond is we want to get ourselves right up to advanced. So this begs the question, how do we get there? Okay, so next slide, please, Kelly. The whole idea of getting to that point on the curve has to be backed by a comprehensive plan, right? And that's what we're doing now. So we're somewhat into a draft mode now for our plan, and this is our user adoption high-level pillars that you see here on the slide. I'm going to quickly go over them because, again, we don't have time to go into great detail for them, but this gives you an idea of where we're going next as an organization with respect to user adoption and M365. So first, refresh our learning program. You've heard some things about it from Kelly, specifically the learning journeys themselves. We're going to keep those, but we want to expand them, of course. Further, we're getting a lot of custom training requests. So we have various groups at SSC who are looking for more targeted, specialized training on things that are specific to them as a team. So that's where we're now creating custom learning for those groups. Well, we want to create a formal structure, a request process, so that users feel that that's a service that we provide. Now we're doing it now, but we just want to create some structure around it. For increasing communications and engagement, we all know the, the famous saying of communicate, communicate, communicate. You can't communicate enough is what I'm trying to say. This whole thing here is we're putting a lot of focus. We want to create even more comms, but specifically, we have a fall event that we're working towards. It's going to be a big one. We want it to be live, right? In a perfect world, it's going to be live. We'll be there in person. And I want you to imagine in the style of a SharePoint Saturday or a Microsoft Ignite, like those types of events. We'd like to do that for SSC, have some kiosks set up, success stories to share, that type of thing. For Expand and Evolve the Champions program, I kind of touched on this. The Champions group today is very much one way. And we're starting to creep, creep, so that's the word I was trying to say. We're starting to creep into two way communication. And to define that, we create content, we share it with our champions, the champions then share it with the groups they represent. We would love to see information coming back now from the champions. So a big focus on expanding and evolving that program will be exactly there. How do we make this two way and even three way sharing that's occurring? 
And then last, definitely not least, you know, and she, Kelly spoke to this as well. Executives and people manager sponsorship is going to be key to any user adoption plan. And this is no different. And a big focus as part of this pillar in our plan is related to coaching. So we've already started doing that. We hope to continue to do even more of that. And that's coaching the executive as well as the people, man man people manager level at SSE. Now, all of this has to be rooted in a strong measurement plan. And that too will be part of our user adoption plan for 2022 and beyond. So with that, I'm gonna pass it back to you, Kelly. So um, at this point in time, we actually already have a few initiatives that are top of mind uh, to help us get this adoption journey rolling forward. Um, one initiative that's going on is inevitable. It's the return to the work sites. So we're going to be helping out adjacent groups across SSC kind of master that transition from remote work to a hybrid workforce. Um, so we'll have things to consider like network performance, hybrid collaboration, and making sure that all the tools are compatible and really kind of uh, altering our um, current status and making it work for a hybrid workplace. Um, another project that we're working on is what we call what to use when. So as we said, the M365 suite is so extensive and there's so many tools that can cause confusion for users and people are going to get stuck. So as Mark mentioned, this obviously would hinder our adoption curve. Uh, so we want to make sure that we address it and lay out some kind of matrix that helps people understand when they should be using which tool. And lastly, as I said much earlier, our collaboration solutions team took on the initial role of user support. So now we're at a good place where we can kind of transfer the technical support over to the service desk and really refocus on our uh, mandate and start to prioritize helping users solve business needs by building custom solutions. Um, and that's what Mark touched on in the last slide. So this one really lends nicely to that adoption curve because it really is about bringing the tools together and taking advantage of them and helping people work more effectively. So there you have it. I know that was tons of information and I hope we've left enough time for questions. So I'm going to pass it back to Eric to get those rolling. Awesome. Thanks, Kelly. Appreciate it. What a great presentation. That was awesome. If if you had told me that we were coming today for a Government of Canada M365 Council meeting, we were talking about speed dating. <laughs> I would I would not have believed you, but what a great uh outside the box uh, concept loved it so we do have we do have some questions so we can go through um go through those quickly um from this one is from i'm going to toss this to you mark um and and you can navigate this question but this was from julia and she says hello i'm on the digital adoption team at i said and she's wondering if you've experienced any issues or barriers with using SharePoint to host your M365 content and communications. Seems to be a way of bypassing the communications teams, which I could see having benefits, but also drawbacks. Would love to hear more about the process of actually posting content to SharePoint. OK, yeah, no, that's definitely a, a great question and certainly front of mind for our organization as well. Um, one of the things I don't think I mentioned in the presentation is that we have not rolled out SharePoint communication sites en masse to the organization. It's been very specific groups that have been somewhat given the, I, I'm going to put these in quotation mark, permission to actually develop a SharePoint communication site. So. She's absolutely correct when she says that it's a little bit of a tricky spot right now because you don't want to bypass your internal corporate communications group. And if you have access to SharePoint communication sites, it's very easy to do that. So that's a little bit of a space right now that we're navigating. And I'm um, Shannon, I don't know if you have anything you want to add to that or does, is that uh, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, let's, yeah let, let's address the elephant in the room. So sure. so us being able to push out that SharePoint site allowed us to be nimble. And during COVID, when corporate communications was, you know, Mark, you spoke to the fact that they were drowning in all these messages they had to send out, they welcomed it. 
So what we did was we respected our corporate intranet site, which is called my SSC, and we ensured that like base content was there, but there was a link to our, our SharePoint site that allowed us to keep the content fresh. We were able to be nimble, update things constantly. So that, that it, it was an excellent partnership. But since then, rightfully, Corporate comms is a little concerned about where things are going with SharePoint communication sites. So we actually are taking a step back and we're doing a bit of analysis on uh, what we're going to call big C communications versus small C. You know, it, is Sh SharePoint, could that be used for a project and initiative that has a start and an end date linked to the corporate intranet? We'll have to see. So we're going through uh, that analysis right now and negotiation with corp comms, but, uh, but we're doing it together. So we'll, we'll land somewhere, I'm sure. Great. Thanks, Shannon. Well, when you when you have had those conversations and you've figured it out, we'd love to have you on for a fourth time uh, to talk about uh, the results of those discussions. Um, we have another question here. Jeff Braybrook also chimed in to, with with his um, analysis. But um, again, Mark, would love to have you touch on it. Um, a compliment, great breakdown of information. Is there a way to see what is going to be deployed to individual departments we can expect to focus on these new applications. Um, you know, for example, Teams webinars came available to us for a long period of time before anyone knew that it actually existed. Um, how can we keep up to date on M365 tools that are due to become available to us? So, so I'm sorry, Eric, the, I'm, I'm not clear on the question. So how can we best be prepared for new technologies that are coming? Yeah, as, as Microsoft pumps out new tech, right? I mean, they've talked about Viva, right? Viva is something that's coming down the line. And so how can departments, individual departments and sections within departments be ready for these changes and these new features that are going to become available? Right, OK. Yeah, so as part of the collaboration solutions team under Jeff Braybrook, a, a big focus for us is staying one step ahead. And we're very much in that space. So we know what new technology is coming. Some of us have special preview access. So we get in there, we learn the tools, we build the materials, and then we get out to our champions. It's a lot of what Kelly was mentioning, right? On 365 Central, our champions groups. And then we make sure that the groups that are gonna be mostly impacted by this new functionality is well aware that it's coming. So absolutely, we are ahead of the game when it comes to stuff that's coming out and down the pipe. Yeah, can I add on to that a little bit, Mark, just to talk about, you know, because so we are SSC for SSC, but SSC is also an enterprise service provider, right? So we work closely with the what I call the mothership of the M365 team that's pushing it across government. Regardless of that, what Microsoft is pushing out is really the responsibility of individual departments to be doing their own research and readiness and prep efforts for those things because we're in a new world now where we're not controlling releases like former, you know, former versions of um, of Office and so on. So it really is up to those departments, and yes, we proactively do that. Great, thanks, Shannon and uh, Mark. Appreciate your input there. Um, another question from Stephanie, how big is your team and what are the skill set specializations in it? Comms, organizational change management, learning, uh, do you partner with other service providers in your organization for your deliverables? So Mark, maybe just going over the, the scope of your team, the specific skill sets that you look for um, for this project to be as successful as it was. And I think Shannon knows that I was going to ask her to take that one on so Shannon, if you're like Shannon. In your mind yeah. I can see you looking. Um, so so first off I you know so the team is really it's a bit of a matrix team at this point um we probably on Jeff's team itself we probably have about through you know four dedicated people to you know to m365 specific things but what I've done um is I've built a change practice that is really taking care of a number of projects that we're delivering to SSC, including cloud managed desktop. You know, when we did our email migration, um, we have some other key items that are coming out as well. So I've created that practice so that the M365 team can link into some of those skill sets if we need to augment or, you know, or reduce. So let me throw out about like say between seven and 10 people, and it's a mix of employees. 
um, great employees like Kelly and a mix, uh, you know, of contractors like Mark. We're just we're trying to hire the hottest talent that there is because we want to be the best that there is ultimately. But one thing that I I I think is difficult for some departments is that M365 falls, you know, it's tech. And often you have tech leaders that are leading and, and you know, and delivering these tools. And in my opinion, and I've said this probably the, the other two times I've been here, and I'll say it again next time, is you need a 50-50 split on your teams if you want to successfully deliver and adopt these tools. So 50% is your tech and keeping on top of configurations and all those fun things. And then on the other side is adoption. You need probably an equal amount of people there. And many tech leaders are probably not aware of that, but I'll, I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. So if you can go back and convince your, uh, convince your leaders to invest appropriately, it's the right thing to do. Thanks, Shannon. Appreciate that. Um, I, Mark, I just, I just default to you for, for questions. So feel sure. free to disperse them as you as you'd like um final question we got five minutes here uh final question we have in the chat here is the 365 central site is excellent has there been any thought about centralizing some of the content to the gc intranet site hmm, that's a good question no we we haven't really thought about that um i think it's a great suggestion so we can certainly take it back to jeff and shannon and have some discussions on possibly having some of that content shared there. Mm -hmm. So that's a great suggestion. Thank you. Yeah, well, I think so. I don't know, Barry and Eric, but have um, have T TBS been here to talk about GC Exchange? I feel like they have. They have. It's been a little while. It's probably yeah. been, uh, geez, about 18 months. I actually been meaning to line them up. So my apologies on that, but I will get GC Exchange up. We've already thought of what we're doing for April and May, so we can get GC Exchange here in June. That's a super idea. Thank you. Yeah, because that's really would be the platform, right? To yeah. Be, so there, you know, uh, TBS is looking at, you know, creating, you know, using the M365 platform and as a means for departments to be connecting and collaborating. And we could certainly partner with with them and the DCC team at Shared Services itself to be able to share a lot of the content. And um, I know we've shared things via playbook, but it might be good to also just share our 365 Central with some basic stuff. However, some of it's department specific. So what we have is not what D&D has, is not what GAC has. So we just have to be mindful of that. Super yeah. idea. And I'll, again, I'll reach out to GC Exchange. Thank you. And I, I do want to add, um, since its conception, um, it has gotten a little bit of attention, 365 Central, and I have had quite a few meetings with people from other departments. Um, and I've given them direct access to the site so they can kind of leverage that information. We don't gatekeep the site and the content that we make. We do like to share it with other departments. So there are on a case by case basis, some people that come into our site, take what they need and kind of make it their own. So we have been doing that on a case by case basis, but I do think that kind of putting it out there on a wider platform would definitely help. So just wanted to add that. Awesome, thanks Kelly. I would definitely it's great content and it's great work. So I think it's worth being shared across the GOC. Uh, five, we got three minutes left. We got one question in just under the wire. Um, and I'll ask it, uh, how is 365 Scoop shared with champions? Is it an email newsletter shared on Teams, posted on SharePoint? Also, how often is it sent out? Kelly, over to you. <laughs> um, Okay, so the scoop actually it's yes to all of the above. So we wanted to make it, as Mark said in the presentation, as easy as possible for people to share it. So we kind of give it to them everywhere and they get to pick what's easiest. So um, it lives on our 365 Central site. That's where all the content um, actually is. We send it out via email. So if people want to forward it to people, that's easy for them. We also give them a template to post in their teams. If that's where their teams prefer getting information, we give them a little banner and a little blurb. And um, yeah, so we kind of try to make it as easy as possible. And then um, we started the champions meetings as biweekly and we've since moved to monthly. So we have a scoop for every um, month. So it used to be two meetings. We would compile into one scoop and give it to them every month. And now every meeting gets its own scoop. So we do the meeting two weeks later, we make the scoop and then send it out. So. Great, thanks, Kelly. So it's it's 
the the scoop is a newsletter and teams and sharepoint it's all of the above and uh monthly so that about wraps it up for our presentation thank you kelly mark and shannon for joining us for the goc m365 council meeting next one will be next month on the 28th of april we'll be reaching out sending out an invite for that we will have another outstanding presentation but again thank you all for coming uh, appreciate your time we will send a follow-up email out this week as well um, with the deck if mark will allow it and um, we'll also uh, we'll have a recording of this available as well so thank you everyone uh, appreciate your time and uh, have a great rest of your day thanks for having thank us thank you thank you everyone bye